Hey guys, my name's Mel. Welcome to my channel. For those of you For those of you who are jumping in straight to this video, the idea behind this and the other videos that I've uploaded today, for anyone whose children are at home, whatever the reason might be, they are also trying to work from home and their children aren't getting the learning they normally would and also they're just feeling a bit at a loss for how to engage and entertain and also teach them. So I am a early childhood educator and primary school teacher. I thought that I would put together a few different videos giving you some suggestions of different things that you could do with your kids or that your kids could do independently so that they can continue to learn and to grow and also hopefully so that you can get a little bit of time to actually work. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk with you guys are about is art and dramatic play and then relaxing with your kids or having your kids relax while you work. So art and dramatic play. When people think of art, they tend to think of lots of messy stuff like painting, which is obviously totally valid. And if you are able, definitely something that you should consider doing with your kids at any time. But particularly during these times when we're in this position that we find ourselves in. So you have, of course, got easel painting. If you have an easel and your kids are able to do that kind of painting, then that's always a great option. If you don't, then some other options would include finger painting. So finger painting is a really, really fun activity that children always enjoy. If you're watching this video on growing together, then you will have seen that two weeks ago, I uploaded a video that was five activities to do when on a rainy afternoon when you're stuck inside. So I mentioned finger painting in that. Go and check that video out. I will link it below. I also go into more detail about uh, two different ways that you can finger paint. Then we have watercolour painting. Um, so of course all of these different things involve you needing the supplies. So if you don't have the supplies then obviously they're not on the cards. But if you have the supplies you could have a couple of different supplies. So you could have water paint palettes and brushes or you could have the types of pencils. There, an example is Derwent pencils, where they become water paints. You color, you do your drawing, and then you paint water over the top, and it becomes like a water painting. Both of those ways are really fun. Both of those ways are quite different. Um, so the water painting straight from paint palettes is probably something you would do with the younger children. The water painting using pencils first. It's probably something you would do with older children who have a little bit more um, experience with drawing and have a, had a bit more practice with drawing but it's certainly fun either way so definitely if you have access to any of those things I would consider getting those things out for your children. So the next couple of activities I want to suggest are for slightly older children but they're really really fun and definitely something that kids can do independently. They may already have done these sorts of things in class so you could just suggest it to them but otherwise you could always sit down with them, tell them what to do and then um, they go ahead and do it. As with pretty much anything I've mentioned here in this video and all the other videos, I have no doubt that if you search on Google or YouTube for these things, there will be some kind of demonstration video. Pinterest is another option. When you're looking for activities, I get a lot of my ideas for lessons and activities from Pinterest as well. And again, I will link all of that stuff in the description for all these videos below. So please feel free to go and check any of those things out. Go access my Pinterest. There's lots of ideas there. So this next activity is called Name Monsters. Um, it's a little bit more tricky, so you might need to watch a demonstration video. And I would probably recommend it for grade four, five and six children. But basically you get an A4 piece of paper. You fold it in half so that it's landscape. That's a very rough fold, but you get the idea. And then you get them using bubble writing to write their name along the edge. And it needs to be so that the letters sort of run down into here. So they write their name, the letters all join together as they write using the bubble writing. And then once you have the bubble writing, they cut out around their name and they cut out any little bits 
there that are not necessary. They unfold it and suddenly their name is on two sides and they have a really awesome monster that they can then colour in um, and add designs and eyes and all that sort of thing too. I highly recommend that activity. It takes a while as well because there's quite a lot of cutting and all of that sort of thing so it definitely will buy you a good 40 minutes hour or even longer so definitely something I recommend. Another one that I think is really fun that you can actually do with any age from basically four up to grade six and I have in fact done it with four-year-olds and 12-year-olds and that is that you get a piece of paper it can be any colored piece of paper I've done it with white I've done it with black you get a grey lead or even a white pencil and you draw a variety of different just random lines around the paper best if they are crossing over each other then you get glue I use um, the kind of PVC runny glue and then get paint brushes or if you have a squeezy glue it's not that great with the paste stuff that you get in rollers but use what you what you have and then you go over those lines with the glue you let it dry may take a whole day so it might be a day two day worth of activities then you get either oil or chalk pastels chalk is better but either will work pick two colors and then you color in the sections in between the glue like i said this is all in my pinterest so definitely look it up because it gets more detailed but it's really fun kids really love it has a great effect I definitely suggest that as an option to do with your children or have them do without you all right so then we move into dramatic art there are so many different things that you could do with dramatic arts the first one that is probably the most obvious that people will turn to is dress ups if you have old clothes that you were thinking of taking to the op shop don't Yet, these are dress ups. Any clothes that you no longer wear, that your older kids no longer wear, that your partner no longer wears, that your mother no longer wears, if you have these clothes that you have yet to take anywhere, they're dress ups. Kids can go for it, it's super fun, it'll be hours and hours of entertainment, you really don't have to do anything other than give them the clothes. Then there is acting out. Acting out is so much fun as well. They can be given a concept and they have to act it out. You could suggest they act out a scene from their favorite movie or favorite book. These are fantastic options and of course bring the dress, ins, dress ups into that because then you have some great costumes. These are fantastic ideas that you can do with your kids or have them do while you are at work. They can always practice while you're working and then you they put on the show for you. Just had a slight lighting adjustment there. Yes, yeah, so those are some of my ideas for art and dramatic play. All really great activities that I would highly recommend. Okay, so moving on to relaxing with your kids or having your kids relax while you're trying to work. So the first and probably most obvious option is reading. Reading is super relaxing, especially if your children can read for themselves. Give them a book, off they go. Audiobooks. Audiobooks are a great option for children who maybe struggle to read, children who can't concentrate very well, younger children who maybe aren't necessarily great readers. Talked all about this in my first one where I talked about literacy, but again, these are fantastic relaxation options. Podcasts, same thing again. Quiet board games and quiet card games are another really great option because they concentrate them but they also bring down the energy level if your children again are old enough to play these by themselves then it's a great option for you to have them do while you're working quiet music and coloring is a really nice option so give them some coloring in pencils give them some coloring in paper or books and put on some quiet music they can calm down and color in to the music You'd be amazed at how well this works. I mean, given the right circumstances. Turn down your lighting so that it's nice and dimmer, so that children feel relaxed and calm. The other day when I was doing an art class, I put on some music and the noise level was basically reduced to almost zero. So definitely works in classroom settings. I think it will work at home quite well. And colouring in is a really great option when you have younger children 
who maybe can't necessarily draw that well or can't read to themselves. Mindful drawing and drawing to music. So drawing to music should be fairly self-explanatory, similar to colouring in, give them some pencils, give them some music, away they go. Mindful drawing is a little bit more involved because it involves taking an object of some description and having the children look at it and study it and then they draw the object trying to put in that detail. This one will involve you a little bit more because you need to set that up a little bit more but once you've got them drawing then it should give them something to do for a while. I did this one a couple of times recently in my art classes and I gave them a time limit. It doesn't work for all kids obviously but I found this worked really 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 well to get them to really concentrate on what they were doing and really focus and be really engaged. So I recommend that as something that you can give your children to do when you want some downtime, got something really pressing you need to get done for work or some really brain intensive stuff that you need to do for work. That's something that I would highly recommend. Lastly, I'd like to suggest Cosmic Kids again. Cosmic Kids Relaxation. So it's the same company and it's the same person, but they run a relaxation as well as the yoga. And it's basically Jamie talking the children through a relaxation session. So she talks them through getting rid of all of their sort of jiggles and wriggles so that they can start to concentrate. It's about mindfulness and thinking about and focusing on various different parts of their bodies and getting them to slow down and breathe and relax. Okay guys, so that was art, dramatic play and relaxation. So I'll leave it there for now. But again, like I've said, hang on because another video's right here.